Hey y'all, what's going on? It's Mr. Six Foot Eight coming at you with a new video. And I'm currently in the drive-thru waiting on my uh, smoothie. But I figured that while I would do that, um, in the midst of it, I just received an update that DMX rapper um, is now officially has been declared um, dead. He passed away. Rest in peace to DMX at 50 years of age. Um, you know, what saddens me about all of this is that, you know, there was a long history of drug addiction that DMX dealt with. And I felt like that a lot of his drug addiction and, and, and things that he did used to cope, you know, with a lot of childhood trauma. As we all know, DMX's mother, Arnette Simmons, who, you know, had four other children who were women, and he was the only boy, um, she beat him along with her boyfriends that would come over, not to mention that his own father at the age of 18 really did not want to keep the child when Arnett, his mom, had the child at an early age. So, you know, there was a lot of stuff that you could say that has transpired that led up to, you know, present day as far as him dealing with his drug addictions and battles. And, you know, it just saddens me that some people feel like that, well, you know, he, he chose to go down this path, but people got to understand when you deal with childhood trauma, stuff like that, it gives you PTSD. And when you deal with stuff like that, it just makes you, you know, become this person that's a whole different person than what you ever thought that you would turn out to be. And, you know, his mom sent him away to the, like this little group home where he actually got his name DMX, you know, after, you know, she found out that he was wandering at night, you know, messing around with stray dogs. Um, reportedly from what I read somewhere, I don't know if that's true, but I read that that's why she sent him to this, you know, like group home because she found out about it that, you know, he would wander at night because he didn't want to be at home because he was being beat on constantly. And, you know, coming from someone that has lived in a violent household, I can understand and know what it's like when you struggle with stuff like that and you're trying to get help and heal. And then you got to think about, you know, a while back, him and Ayala had a special where, you know, he was trying to mend relationships with his son. And, you know, I recall him saying that, you know, basically he, his son, you know, he was not going to see him until he ended up being at his funeral and he wanted him to give him a hug. And his son didn't want him to get, want him to, his son did not want to give him a hug. And Ayala told him that he didn't have to give him a hug, but you could see the, the hurt in his son's eyes. And, you know, that's how generational curses start is because of the fact that you have all of this toxic behavior from birth as a child and when the person carries that and doesn't get the help that they need until later on it becomes a thing hold on y'all gotta move my car up a little bit i'm in the drive through make sure i don't scrape my rims okay but it becomes a thing of where you know basically it's just like it passes on from one generation to the next so you know it's just really sad to see all of this stuff transpire and it's just like basically he never got the help that you know i feel like that he probably should have gotten i mean even though he went to counseling and therapy and stuff like that but you know mental illness in the black community has always been one of those things to be swept under the rug you know people want to sweep them sweeping under the rug pretend like it never happened and i feel like even though he probably dealt with a lot of counselors and therapy i don't think that he was able to heal because you got to understand you're going to always have some kind of residue you know, from stuff like that as a child. So it's gonna always be one of those things to where it hunts you, you know, forever, because it's just like some things you just, no matter how much counseling you get, you cannot get rid of. And so my heart breaks for him and his family to know that this man struggled, you know, to know that he, he dealt with a demon, you know, this addiction, he couldn't get rid of it because he needed it to help cope and make himself feel better. And, you know, I, I definitely don't, you know, judge as far as a person, as far as what they do, because you don't know that person's story. So, you know, I always say instead of, you know, tearing him down, bashing him, talking about, you know, stuff that he's done. Yeah, he may not have been a good father to some of his kids and stuff like that, but you got to think about it. Generational curses are real. Toxic behavior is real. All of that is real. So, you know, just keep them in your prayers, you know. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm back, y'all. So, yes, just keep them up in your prayers. You know, like I said, I've dealt with a lot of stuff when it comes to being in a re rehabilitation center for, you know, whether it's drug dependency, 
um, you know, being being dependent on stuff, you know, using other stuff is bad habits to cope with other stuff in my childhood. I understand what that feels like. So that's why I'm saying instead of, you know, judging this man, tearing him down, like I said, we don't know the kind of pain he felt, the kind of pain he experienced. And so instead of tearing the person down, we should just learn to sit here and pray for the person. Sorry, y'all got cut off again. We should learn to sit here and pray for the person and just hope that healing takes place with his family that, you know, remains. You know, he had a, he had quite a few kids and I just pray that, you know, all of his children, I just pray to God, especially the son that was on the Ayala Fix My Life episode. I pray to God that there was peace found. I did know, um, I saw somewhere that in 2012 on um, some kind of uh, special. He was able to kind of mend fences with his mom, Arnett Simmons, and, you know, basically say that, come to, come to the acceptance of the fact that even though she was a bad mother, he still loved her and that, you know, the choices that she made, you know, as a younger person that, you know, if she didn't know any better, she didn't know any better. So I was happy to know that at least he, he mend fences somewhere along as far as with his mom who was responsible for i felt like a lot of his pain that he carried around but you know just pray for him y'all rest in peace to dmx i hope that people can look at this and, and and apply it to their own life and you know if you're dealing with something you're struggling with something you know tell a person that you can confide in get the help that you need because we all out here going through something until next time y'all peace